So let's actually play with integration services now. We have it installed, we're all ready to go. Let's actually start working with it. We have a couple of terms that we need to come to grips with here first, okay? So we create an integration services package, okay? A package is, you know, somewhat akin to an executable. It contains, which contains one or more tasks. These are integration services tasks. Tasks are the functionality of integration services. There are things like the FTP task that allows you to upload or download files. There is the data flow task that allows you to move data from a source to a destination. We have the send mail task, which you can imagine it makes a little envelope, puts a stamp on it. No, well, you get it. It sends an email, right? Um, so the package creates tasks. And we also have solutions which can contain multiple packages. And there's a few other kind of behind the scenes things that maybe a couple of videos now from we will see more uh, real world here. Uh, but for now, it's good enough to know that an SSIS package is your execution point. Okay, so we execute a package. That's what we the developers, the admins want to have happen. The package then calls the tasks. There is logic within the package, if you code it this way, that says, hey, if this, then that. So if it's between 2 a.m. and 4 p.m., then go ahead and use this FTP task. If it's outside of that range, use this data flow task, okay? Programming logic. Okay. It's a very graphic, uh, GUI interface that is, is really easy. We'll play with that here in, in a, a little bit here. Okay, So you have your terms, excuse me, uh, package and tasks. Those are our basic terms. Now, I think that the logical place to start working with integration services here is going to be in the management studio. Um, not because this is really where we develop packages, okay? So we develop packages uh, in a couple of different ways, either through a wizard, which is what I'm about to show you here in the next, uh, this video and the next video, or through SQL Server Data Tools, SSDT. We'll do that in a couple more videos, so like three videos, two, three videos from now, okay? Um, so SSMS though, Management Studio, has a couple of different cool things I wanna show you. So let me go ahead and launch this. And one of the first things that I want to show you is that notice that the four server types are listed that you can actually connect up to your integration services instance. Well, this is cool and this is great from a management standpoint. This is not where we will be designing packages, creating packages, editing packages, making significant changes to the package logic flow. Uh, changing the pipeline, changing how a particular package responds to the environment, okay? So this is Management Studio, and that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be issuing management commands. We're going to be saying, execute this package, schedule this package, assign security to this package, okay? So let's actually not play with the integration services yet because we don't have any packages. Let's create a package in the management studio, okay? So I'm gonna to go to the database engine and I'm gonna connect up and check this out. I can go over to my database and let's say, <sighs> boss has asked me, he says, hey Scott, can you give me an Excel spreadsheet that lists all of our courses? Well, we have that information. It's inside this course table, sorry. See, it's right inside here and if we were to run a query, you would see it. All right, so here's what I can actually do. I can right click on the database, go to tasks, and I can go to export data. These are our integration services, okay? So the effect of running these, these launch two wizards, or really it's one wizard, it's called the import and export wizard. <laughs> I think they just used both commands from a usability standpoint. Well, what if somebody's looking for export? What if somebody's looking for import, right? Um, so these create an SSIS package, okay, that contains one or more tasks, okay? Now there's going to be a slight gotcha here, okay? Let, let me show you something here. Um, let's go through, go to tasks, 
and I'm going to export data. And it doesn't really matter which of these I choose because they both launch the import and export wizard. Okay, same thing. Again, it's, I think they chose that just from a usability standpoint. So I say next, choose your data source. So let's get a couple of terms here. The data source is really critical. Remember that you are going to extract from the source. Okay, you are then going to transform and then you are going to load the destination. Okay, so this is ETL. We're starting this process. So we choose this data source up here and this is the, where we want to extract from. Okay, so I say native client. This is SQL Server 2012. Okay. Native client 10.5, SQL Server 2008 R2. Native client 10.0, SQL Server 2008, and so forth. Okay, those are the actual version numbers. Okay, you are using a client to connect here. Okay, so we call it the native client here. However, what can we use as a data source? Are we required to use SQL Server as a data source? No. You remember all those icons where we talked about uh, DB2, MySQL, Visual Fox Pro, and all that stuff? You can use almost any data source. If you can get a driver or a provider that will tell integration services how to make the connection, you can use something as a data source. Now, we happen to be looking at the default installation of integration services here. So these are the default settings. We can go with a flat file. Okay? We'll talk about flat files in the next video, actually. We can use Microsoft Access as a data source. We can use Excel. Uh, we can use analysis services. See the 10.0 and 11.0 showing you the different versions there. Uh, Oracle, uh, Microsoft SQL Server. And there are many, many more. Just because you don't see it in a default, that does not mean it's unavailable to you. You just would have to go and install the driver or the provider for that source, okay? So we're going to stick with the native client. And so now it's asking me, which server do you want to connect to? This is the uh, server name and instance name if you're using multiple instances, okay? So I'm not using multiple instances. This actually maps up with Win7 here. So I'm going to connect. My data source is going to be this server, okay? My database engine, okay? How do I connect? It's going to make an in-process connection here. It's going to pass my credentials using Windows authentication if I go choose Windows authentication here. If I want to choose SQL Server authentication, maybe I want to have this connection be made in another security context, I could do that as well. Uh, it's automatically chosen this database because I right-clicked on this database here, right? But I can choose any of the other databases that are on this server. I say next, where's my destination, okay? Scroll down, notice that we can make the same choices we made for the sources here, okay? So let's say I want to export to Excel. Where do you want to put it, okay? I can just type it in if I want to. I can say C colon... Uh, my Excel file.xls, or I can click the browse and go choose where it is that I want, see? Okay. But I'll choose this. If I want a header row in my Excel spreadsheet, I'm going to check the box that the first row has column names. Now I am leaving this default alone. Notice that it defaults to, at this point, the older versions of Excel, an XLS file. Okay. I'm leaving that right now. I'm okay with that. Okay. I say next. What is it that I want to copy? Okay. So now we have to define what we want to extract. We've defined the source and the destination, but we now have to define what it is we want to extract. And we can copy all of a table's data, or we can write a query, and we could write joins and write very complex queries or very simple queries. Okay. I'm going to tell it, copy the data. Okay. And we can choose from tables or views. So it's going to get all of the data in a table or the entire result set from a view. And I say next. Okay. Which table do I want? I want the course table. Okay. So what it's telling me down here, you see the little kind of trying to make it a shiny Excel spreadsheet there. It's telling me it's going to create a new worksheet called course in this 
Excel file. Okay, so there will be a, a worksheet called course. Okay. Now, you can click the edit mappings over here, okay, and you can see the data types that it's going to map. So it has the source column. These are from my SQL server. And this is what it's going to create because I have chosen to create that table. Okay, so it's going to create one called course ID. If I want to come play around down here, I can change this. Okay, I can change title to course title. Okay, and I can change data types if I choose to. If the table exists, I can drop it. And if I click the edit SQL, this is the jet SQL statement that it will issue to Excel. <laughs> and see, it's creating a column in the worksheet called course title. So I don't need to edit the SQL, but we did modify and change the column. Okay, You can hit a preview button to see what it's going to do. Okay, Say next. Now review your type mapping. We have a date time issue here. Okay, And it says, hey, make sure that you're going to have some issues. You have a, a little bit of an issue here with a type conversion. Okay, you're converting from date time two to varchar, varchar. Okay, do you want it to convert? Yes, we want to actually convert. And you can actually kind of play around with these and see the uh, uh, errors if you actually double type here. Okay, see the conversion information. Now, when we say next, we have two choices. It's going to create a temporary package and then we can run that package. And it will perform this data flow task that we've just asked it to do. Because that's behind the scenes what we've set up. We've made two connections, a source and a destination. And we've, draw, we've made a data flow task that says, copy the data from the source to the destination. Okay? If we want to, we can save this package. And we can save it in the SQL Server. And we can choose to encrypt passwords and uh, different connection information in here. Or we can say, you know what, don't store the connection information that we just added in the wizard. You know, when we typed in, um, we didn't really do it, but we could have typed in the SQL Server login name and password. Well, does it store that information when it stores this package? Okay. So we'll save this package, and I'll show you what that looks like here. I say next, give this a name export courses to Excel spreadsheet. Okay. And you can give it a description if you want and you know learn it first uh, database 170.dbo.course. Uh, you can add in right there export if you want. That's just an optional step. Where is it going to be stored? This is your integration services here. We're going to store it in the SQL Server. Okay, and so where, I, Windows Authentication, I say next, and it's going to do two things. It's going to save the package and run the package. And we say finish, lots of cool steps. There we go, 12 rows were transferred. You can click on here and get nothing really. Um, you can click on a report here if you need to. Um, we don't need to for this one. Now, we haven't affected our actual database itself, but we can go down and look on the C drive and see the Excel file here and double click on it. And hey, look at there. It sure did. And it brought it out as course title. And notice down here, we have a spreadsheet called course. So we've just exported from SQL Server to Excel. Okay, now there's one gotcha. I kind of alluded to this a little bit later. Hey, let me go ahead and come back over here. We kind of went the long way with this, didn't we? We right click, we said tasks, we said uh, export data, and uh, we chose this. But when we chose our destination, we chose Excel 2003. Right? So what if I go over here and I say, see uh, my Excel file dot XLSX. Right? XLSX, if you remember, was the new file format for Excel 2007 and forward. So I choose Microsoft Excel 2007. Okay, Here's a big gotcha. You will get an error. Okay, And the error says the operation could not be completed, the Microsoft ACE OLADB 12.0 provider. Okay? 
it will happen to you. It will happen to everybody that you know <laughs> that ever launches this menu because nobody wants to say, hey, I want to go back and use Excel 2003. SSMS, let's just write this down here. Okay. Management Studio is a 32-bit application. Okay. When you launch the export wizard, it launches a 32-bit version. Good gracious. Okay. The problem is that I'm on a 64-bit machine. And I ran a 64-bit installation here of SQL Server. So when it launches that 32-bit version, there is no 32-bit, uh, sorry, 64-bit, no, I'm right, 32-bit provider for Excel 2007 here. Okay? So the solution to this, yes, you can do it, but you can't use Management Studio. Okay, close out of Management Studio, get out of here, go to your start menu, go to SQL Server 2012, and right there, you get the option to choose which one of these you want. They are the same wizard, remember, import and export, choose the 64-bit one, and it will work just fine. Okay, so go to 64-bit, it's the exact same screens, nothing seems to have changed, right, you can change it to Win7 or... And use local destination again it's excel um my 2010 excel file dot xlsx if you do not put the xlsx it will default to an xsls xls xls sorry did i say that right <laughs> and now i can choose 2007 and it works fine okay so make your choice and uh, i chose the wrong database the wrong source database i think um sorry i'm gonna make my right choice copy the course table again um i'm not going to change it from course title um run it immediately and say finish okay and when i look at it now sure enough it has created that correctly D the data is no different is it no the file type is the only real difference and perhaps some metadata in the XML for the XSLX. Uh, but really for us, it's no uh, big difference here. Um, typically when I'm exporting, I would be completely fine exporting to XLS, uh, but you may run into file size problems or column width problems. Uh, so XS XLSX is going to be easier and what you just should use today.